All right. Good morning um, or good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you are in the country. Um, and welcome to today's webinar on the Child Welfare Training Toolkit presented by the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare. My name is Jean Plankenship, and I am a Child Welfare Program Specialist um, at the Children's Bureau um, on the Administration uh, for Children and Youth and Families. Today's webinar is brought to you by the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare, which is operated by the Center for Children and Family Futures out of Lake Forest, California. The National Center is supported by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA, the Center for Substance Abuse Treatment um, at SAMHSA, and the Children's Bureau and the Administration for Children, Youth, and Families. The Child Welfare Training Toolkit is a training package developed to educate child welfare workers about substance abuse and co-occurring issues among families involved in the child welfare system. Something that we know, um, a topic that we know is of interest to many, many communities, um, especially in light of the current substance use disorder issues that are affecting many, many communities across the country today. We have over 700 people registered for the call, so we know there are many people interested in sharing this topic and information um, with, your, um, with, your, with the field. Um, we are so glad to have all of you here on the, with us today on the call and um, look forward to introducing you to this really great resource. Today's webinar is being presented by Kim Bishop Stevens, Senior Program Associate for the National Center, and Sarah O'Rourke, Program Associate also with the National Center, who have been closely involved in the updating of this Child Welfare Training Toolkit to reflect the most up-to-date information, as well as develop special topic modules that respond to specific issues and concerns that reflect current topics of interest to the field today. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Kim Bishop Stevens to get us started on introducing you to this great resource. Thank you, Jean. I'm excited to be here today as we roll out the Child Welfare Training Toolkit. I will talk about the background and purpose of the toolkit, provide an over of the training modules, and take an, we'll take an in-depth look at one of the toolkit modules. I'll then turn it over to Sarah, who will talk more about where you can access the toolkit and how you can personalize the materials for your use. We'll leave time to answer any questions at the end, please send your questions via the chat box and we'll get to them at the end of the training. The Child Welfare Training Toolkit was originally developed by the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare in 2009. It was developed to educate child welfare professionals about substance use and mental health disorders among families involved in the child welfare system. It was intended to provide learning opportunities and baseline knowledge on substance use, mental health disorders, and interventions, motivate and facilitate cross-systems work. The original content has been updated and added to to reflect current practice considerations. New modules were designed to be delivered in smaller trainings or can be combined for full or half-day trainings. Materials can be adapted to meet the needs of the trainers and audience. This includes adding your local and state data, policies, and procedures to customize the training. Now we're going to take a closer look at the toolkit and its content. The overall goals of the toolkit are to understand substance use disorder, identify substance use as a factor in a child welfare case, learn strategies for engaging parents and families in services, understand potential effects of substance use disorders for the parents, children, and caregivers, and learn the importance of collaboration within the system of care. The toolkit is important because it offers education to child welfare workers about substance use disorders among families involved in the child welfare system. We kept the overall goals of the toolkit in mind as we developed each of the training modules. Through a deeper understanding of all of the topics, child welfare workers can apply knowledge gained to their casework and improve their own practice. The training toolkit consists of 10 modules, seven core modules, and three special topic training modules. The modules are about two to three hours of content material. Some of the modules are focused on educational content and other modules are geared towards building clinical skills. The special topic trainings in particular lend themselves to lunch and learn training. Each module has a specific content theme. For module one, the goal is to provide child welfare workers with information on a range of co-occurring needs 
that parents involved in the child welfare system may experience. Modules two and three were developed to educate child welfare workers about substance use disorders, treatment, recovery, and mental health and co-occurring disorders, trauma, and domestic violence. Modules four and five were designed to enhance clinical skills of child welfare workers. Module four provides strategies that workers can use to engage parents in a change process when there are concerns of substance use, mental health, or trauma. Module five provides child welfare workers with an understanding of the importance of responding to families from a strength-based perspective while providing for ongoing safety assessments and monitoring progress related to substance use disorders. Module six provides an understanding of ways in which children can be affected by their parents' substance use or co-occurring disorder. Module seven focuses on the importance of collaboration with service providers and other systems to serve families. The three special topics were developed to focus on current needs of the field. Methamphetamine and opiate modules look at the effects of methamphetamine and opiate use on families. Prenatal substance exposure discusses the unique needs of infants who were prenatally exposed to substances and their families. A summary of the Child Abuse and Prevention Treatment Act and the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act will be highlighted as they relate to infants with prenatal substance exposure. What's in a module? Now let's take a closer look at what's included in each of the modules. Each module includes a facilitator's guide with training goals and learning objectives, a PowerPoint presentation, resources, and references. In the facilitator's guide, the intended audience, facilitator qualifications, training tips, and materials are also included. The PowerPoint presentation contains talking points and key details in the notes sections of each slide. These talking points are not intended to serve as a script to be read aloud to attendees, but rather as key points to highlight while presenting. Facilitators are encouraged to infuse their own content knowledge, expertise, local policies, and real world, real world experience to bring the training to life. Discussion questions and experiential activities are integrated throughout the training session. Some modules lend themselves to more activities than other modules based on the content and the outline goals of the module. Trainers are encouraged to enhance the activities to create interactive training that can bridge the curriculum to the role of the child welfare staff who are being trained. Oops, sorry about that. An overview of module two, which is understanding substance use disorders, treatment and recovery. We're gonna take an in-depth look at some of the content of one of the modules for you to have an understanding of the types of information included in a module. This is just a selection of the content that is included in module two. Each module at the beginning will have learning objectives specific to that module. These are the learning objectives for module two, focus on understanding substance use disorders. You can see that the training material begins with a basic focus on understanding substances and substance use disorder and progresses to recognizing substance misuse in the child welfare practice. An overview of treatment and the recovery process are also emphasized. Each module has group activities included in the module. We also began each module with questions from the Collaborative Values Inventory. The Collaborative Values Inventory, referred to as the CVI, is a tool created by Children and Family Futures and is a neutral way of assessing how much a group shares beliefs and values that underline the work. The CVI includes 46 items which assess a participant's opinion on a variety of statements regarding families affected by substance use 
and or families involved in the child welfare system. These are just a few of the questions from the CVI to spark conversation, and the intention is not to have the audience complete the full CVI questionnaire. If you would like more information about the CVI, you can visit our website to learn about the full tool. Each module has a few questions selected for each specific topic from the CVI to be used as discussions at the beginning of the training to understand individual values and beliefs. Participant answers should be kept anonymous with the purpose being to discuss how an individual's beliefs and values can affect the work they do and how they interact with families. Some of the slides that we have selected to show you today from module two highlight some of the educational content. In module two, the content is focused on understanding specific substances. As this module is focused on understanding substance use disorder, there are further slides with other common substances. The content in this module is geared to substance use disorders 101 for child welfare workers to have a basic knowledge base. We have included the American Society of Addiction Medicine's definition to highlight substance use disorders as a chronic disease. Other content in this module also gives a basic understanding of some brain chemistry related to substance use disorders. As the module progresses, the content moves from understanding substance use disorders to the effect of parental substance use on children and the role of the child welfare worker. As you can see from this slide, this, there are risks associated with each substance that is on the slide around how parental substance use disorder can affect children by specific substance. As the content moves into understanding the role of the child welfare worker, there are opportunities to insert local policies and practices. In this slide, trainers can insert information about their own screening and referral practices. Screening is highlighted here as a process of recognizing signs and symptoms of substance use, not as a standardized screening tool. Some jurisdictions, we realize, use a standardized screening tool, and this would be an opportunity to add that content to make it more relevant for the audience you are training. Recognizing substance use should be discussed as part of your local child welfare policies and procedures. Module two moves from understanding substance use disorders and the effects on children to referral to treatment. This slide highlights how treatment programs diagnose a substance use disorder. It is not intended that child welfare workers will diagnose a substance use disorder, but it is important for child welfare workers to be familiar with the criteria a treatment provider use, uses to diagnose. This slide displays the continuum of family-based services, which offers a framework for defining the approaches to family involvement and treatment services. This is an opportunity for trainers to facilitate a conversation about a shared understanding of family-based services and how local programs provide services to families. This is another opportunity for trainers to insert local information about their treatment provider and services to both parents and children. Every module has group activities or discussion opportunities. Some of the activities are whole group activities and some are designed for small group or partner activities to build on clinical skills. It is important to have a training facilitator who has content knowledge and is comfortable with leading activities and facilitating an interactive training experience. These discussion prompts ask the facilitator to ask participants to think about parenting implications for a parent involved in child welfare who is actively using drugs or alcohol, then encourages them to ask participants about what it might look like for a parent who has just stopped using drugs and alcohol and what they might observe on a home visit. In the notes section of the slide, the facilitator will be prompted to ask the group a question 
and perhaps make a list as a group after content information has been presented. Activities are focused on increasing child welfare worker skills and knowledge. Training facilitators are encouraged to add additional activities, role plays, and videos to enhance the training and to match the audience skill set level. If you have workers with more experience, it will be helpful to add case examples. This slide again, you can see highlights and prompts the facilitator to ask questions about examples of the effects of parental substance use on a family from, again, previous material that was presented just prior to this slide. We're not gonna show this video today, but several of the training modules have videos embedded in them. It is important if you're presenting the PowerPoint presentation, if you know that there's gonna be a video that you have the capacity to show the video as part of your training. Content in all of the modules is focused on the role of the child welfare worker. Bridging local practices and policies into the training is key to making this training fit your community and the needs of your workforce. Included on this slide is a note that we can't possibly include all of the in-home indicators and facilitators are encouraged to use their own content knowledge to infuse the training and add more to the training material that is provided. So again, this is information that tries to bridge substance use disorder and what child welfare workers might be seeing in a home around in-home indicators. As the module goes into treatment and understanding substance use disorder treatment, information is also included how child welfare workers might understand treatment progress. There is a prompt in this slide that encourages the facilitator and participants to discuss treatment progress and information they receive from treatment program and local collaboration practices. Most of the toolkit modules highlight the need for collaboration between multiple systems who work with family. These included in this slide are just some of the areas that child welfare workers might ask treatment providers. We do know that some jurisdictions have created templates for ongoing progress monitoring and communication between treatment providers and child welfare workers. I'm gonna now turn this webinar over to Sarah to talk about how you can access the toolkit and customize the toolkit for your local needs. There are a couple of ways to access the Child Welfare Training Toolkit from the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare website. So if you go to the homepage of the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare website, there's a ribbon at the top and you can select the training button. If you double click on training, it will take you to the training homepage that lists both the online tutorials and the Child Welfare Training Toolkit. You can then select the webpage for the Child Welfare Training Toolkit. So if you see at the bottom of this page, you may have to scroll down to see where the Child Welfare Training Toolkit is. Um, and then there's a link where you can select and it will take you to the homepage. You can also type in the um, web link that's listed here in blue, or you can click on that hyperlink and it will take you to this page, which is the landing page for um, all of our training materials. So this is the home page for the Child Welfare Training Toolkit. You'll see on the left there are modules um, listed and it cuts off here, but there are all 10 modules listed down the left side of the page. And the plus signs are drop-down menus, so if you select those, it will take you, um, it will show you the PowerPoint, the facilitator's guide, and the PDF presentation. So you can download each of those, or you can also download a zip file of all the materials. On this homepage, you'll also see an overview of the goals and the purpose of the training toolkit. And then if you select the drop-down menu where the overview is on the left side, you'll find the glossary and resource list that you can download and use in conjunction with all of the training modules. Um, this has a, an overall resource list, but topic-specific resources are also listed at the end of each module. The training toolkit is intended to be used and adapted by a trained facilitator. Ideally, the trainer will identify local content experts to train on specific components within each module. For example, in Module 2 that we highlighted earlier, 
understanding substance use disorders, treatment, and recovery, the trainer might want to, per to partner with a treatment provider in their community to help participants understand what treatment looks like in their own community. And then on the slide, we have some additional facilitator qualifications that you should take into consideration when you are selecting a facilitator for the training. The facilitator should be knowledgeable about substance use disorders, mental health, and the child welfare systems. They should have content expertise in the topics introduced in the module, and they should be familiar with the laws and policies that affect child welfare agency decision making to ensure that the information is presented in the proper context. The training toolkit was developed to be adapted for the individual needs of communities and states. The modules can be combined for a full day or even a two day training, and they can also be used individually. Each module has about two hours of content. Um, so the individual modules can also be a really good fit for a um, lunch and learn as was mentioned previously. Throughout each module, there are prompts for the facilitator to incorporate their local policies and practices into the training. For example, the special topic module on methamphetamine prompts the facilitator to discuss their child welfare policy on how a child welfare worker should respond if they suspect a meth lab in the home. For additional examples of toolkit adaptations or technical assistance to plan and implement the training modules in your jurisdiction, please contact the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare, and we will list our contact information on the very last slide of this presentation. This next slide highlights some additional examples of how you can adapt the training toolkit to the needs of your community or state. You can partner with a local expert on substance use disorders to co-facilitate the training. You can share specific screening tools for substance use disorders used or approved for use by the Child Welfare Agency. You can supplement the content with information about how child welfare workers can locate treatment for parents in the community. And you can highlight local child welfare programs with expertise in serving families affected by substance use disorders or who provide family-centered treatment. This slide is a screenshot of a page from the facilitator's guide, and you'll see the notes at the bottom of the slide. So um, the facilitator's guide has all of the slides from the PowerPoint, and then it has additional talking points or recommendations for the facilitator. So you can see the three asterisks with a bolded statement after it. Um, these are littered throughout the training, um, and they indicate a pause in the training for reflection for a group activity, or to incorporate your community's policies and procedures. So if you can see on this screen, it says, um, the statement here says, talk about your agency's screening process and referral to substance use disorder treatment. So that would be an opportunity for the facilitator to bring in um, unique resources from their own community. And then lastly, all of these training resources are free and available to the public. However, if you choose to incorporate these training materials or adapt them for your own purposes, we ask that you use this acknowledgement um, somewhere in your presentation. And this acknowledgement um, language is also listed on our website. So you can go to the training toolkit webpage and download um, or, or copy and paste this acknowledgement into your um, training materials. And with that, we will turn it over to questions. So one of our first questions is, do you actually provide this training to agencies? And Kim, I'll turn this one over to you. Thanks, Sarah. The intention of these of the training toolkit is for for trainer to take the information and provide and have local trainers provide the training to to your staff. So we provide all of the materials and can certainly provide some support and technical assistance around how you can adapt the training materials for your local audience. So the intention is for you to work with local trainers. Perfect, thank you. Reading some other questions. Um, someone asked, are you able to provide a summary or adaptations made from the original version? And I'll go ahead and answer this. Um, we have been working with a couple of states over the past few months who have um, piloted some of our training materials. So they've taken them and they are currently working on adapting them. 
Um, I'm not sure if anyone has um, implemented their adaptation of the training in their state yet, but it's definitely something that we'll be tracking. Um, and we do encourage you if you've adapted it or if you choose to do so after this webinar um, and use it in your state, we'd love to hear back from you. And that is something that we can then share out with, um, with other states and community. Um, another question was about recording the webinar and we will record it and we will send it out to everyone. Um, as far as the web address, it is, if you go to the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare um, website, you can go and click on the training um, at the ribbon on the top, but here's the, the link as well. We've got a couple more questions. Another question is, um, is there a code needed to access these materials or are they free for anyone? And Kim, I will let you answer that one as well. These, the materials are all on the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare on the website and in the area that Sarah directed you to. If you have trouble accessing any of the materials, please don't hesitate to call us or reach out to us and we're happy to help you if you're having trouble downloading the materials. And I have another question for you, Kim. Is it intended that all modules will be delivered sequentially? That is not the intention. It depends on the needs of the services and the, the child welfare staff in, in your area and what you've already provided for training and what your needs are. Module one really is that overview. If there isn't a lot of training happening already that you might want to start there. Other jurisdictions have already provided some training and are really looking for more specific training materials and content on methamphetamine or opioids or infants with prenatal substance exposure. So you may be delivering the training certain modules and not deliver other modules because you've already done that training in your community. It's, so they're not intended to be delivered in order. Great, thank you, Kim. I have another question for you. Could these trainings be adapted to also train monitors who will be placed in the home on behalf of CPS to help families seek help if they have substance abuse issues identified? The training material in general was geared to child welfare workers. However, um, the, uh, much of the training material is overall knowledge on the particular topic and can be useful for other staff or agencies and services working with families involved in the child welfare system with substance use disorders. So I would encourage you to look through some of the modules and some of the modules may be appropriate for training for people outside of the child welfare workforce. Great, thank you. Someone asked about the online tutorials, so I will just go ahead and clarify. So the online tutorials um, that are also available on our training page are self-paced um, tutorials. You can sign up for them on our website and there is an access key for them, but they're really individual trainings that you walk through on your own and those take between three and five hours, I will say. Um, this resource is really intended for, as we um, mentioned, a qualified um, and experienced facilitator to um, give this training. So these, it's a training curriculum, um, and then we expect that you identify someone in your community who's able to train on these topics, um, and that you partner with local people in your community to also help facilitate um, the training, um, specifically with some of the content um, where you might need someone else who's an expert in that content area. Um, someone else asked, when will the trainings be available online? Those are online right now. So both the online tutorials, but then also the Child Welfare tr Training Toolkit, which is what we've really been focused on today. Um, they can both be accessed on the training page on the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare um, homepage. So those are, you can go on right after the webinar and browse around and look through all of the modules. Someone else asked, would these be appropriate for web-based presentations? Um, and I'll speak a little to this, and then Kim, if you have anything to add. We did have one state that reached out to us about turning this into a web-based presentation. Again, with all the caveats that this is meant for a qualified facilitator. Um, so you should be thinking about that if you are going to adapt it for an online training. 
um, you could also reach out to us and we would love to help work with you on how that could maybe happen. Um, the state that we've been working with, they have web developers on their end that we're going to work on taking our materials and then trying to get them online into an online type of training. So we haven't um, had an update on that, but we hope to hear from them on how far they got on that. And that might be something that we could share out with folks if you're interested. So please contact us and we have our contact information up on the screen right now um, if you'd like more information about that. Someone else asked, will this slideshow be available for a review? And yes, we will hope to send this out after um, the recording today. Sarah, can I just add to this being adapted for web-based training? You would still need to have a qualified training facilitator because the slides are not intended to have the note sections read aloud, but you would still need a training facilitator to adapt it to make your own web-based training from the toolkit material. Great, thank you. Someone else asked, could other entities like CASA use this for training on some of the modules? Kim, do you wanna answer that one? Sure, again, I would encourage you to look at the training modules and some of the modules may be appropriate for other agencies or staff working with the same population. Although this was originally designed for child welfare workers, it still may be appropriate for CASAs and other service providers. And then a follow-up or a similar question is, can an individual trainer who works on a consultant basis go into this toolkit and specific modules for one's own knowledge to be able to use within training? I'm not sure I quite understand the question, but I think if the information is intended to be adapted, and I believe that Sarah did highlight how you would um, show that the material came from the training toolkit if a facilitator was going to adapt the material from the training toolkit. Yes, and I think that from what I'm understanding of this question it might be that the person is asking if they can use the train the toolkit for their own knowledge. And yes, absolutely. I think that you could review the materials and um, for your own knowledge as well. Um, someone else asked, can you share information about feedback from an agency that has used the toolkit? Um, and I don't think we're at the point yet where we can do this. We haven't had anyone. Um, this was just launched last week, so we haven't had anyone that has um, successfully adapted the training toolkit yet, but we hope to have more information on that in the coming months. And again, you're welcome to reach out to us um, if you need help doing this in your own community. Another question, is there any material available that speaks to caregivers having to deal with children placed in their care coming from these homes? Kim, do you wanna answer that one? I would encourage you to take a look after the training at the training module. Um, I don't know specifically what kind of information you're looking for. You might find some information around in the needs of children module. So I would encourage you to look at specific content after this webinar on our website. Perfect, thank you. Um, someone else asked, is this training appropriate for legal personnel, parents, counsel, or judges? Um, and I will speak to this, and then Kim, if you have anything to add. Um, this is intended for child welfare workers. I think the information is relevant to um, other systems. Um, and we mentioned a little bit the online training tutorial earlier. Um, that's a self-paced online training, and we do have one specific for legal professionals. So at this time, we don't have this kind of training curriculum for legal professionals that could be adopted, but we do have the online tutorial. Um, and of course, you could adapt this information, I think, for your system. Ken, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I would encourage you to reach out to the National Center on Substance Use and Child Welfare if you have other technical assistance for training needs, and we can see if we can help support those. Thank you. One more question. If we were to adapt the material for skilled, experienced facilitators, how much could we alter the materials to insert local examples, policies, slash policies, as well as how do we attribute to you? Um, so I would, again, encourage this person to reach out to us um, and we could work with you. This, this, if you have an experienced facilitator, that's great. So that's what we really want. Um, 
you could take these materials and use them however you want. Um, so you could do more in depth. We've also had some people say that they really want basic, you know, really, really basic information. Um, so you could certainly adopt this to the skill level um, of the audience you're training for. And then as far as attributing um, to us, we have that acknowledgement. Um, that was a few slides back, but that's also in our, um, on the website where the training toolkit is. So you can just pull that directly from the website um, and insert that somewhere into the training that you adopted the, the materials. And again, if you have any questions, please do reach out to us. Um, we expect that you know, this will be an interactive process and we wanna help um, folks use this in the best way in their own community. Um, one more question is how was this presentation funded and how was it put together? Um, and I'll just quickly briefly say that this, um, as mentioned at the very beginning of the um, webinar today, this is all funded by the National Center on Substance Abuse and Child Welfare. Um, and you can go on our website to learn more about us if you would like. So I think that's all the questions I'm seeing. If anyone has any last questions, please send them through. Um, I'll give it a few more minutes and then I think we'll wrap up if no one else has questions. Okay, one more question. Is this based on evidence-based practice? Kim, I'll pass that one over to you. Thanks, Sarah. For the most part, the, in, all of the information in the training toolkit is referenced and, and resources are available at the end of the training modules. Um, so some of the information may be related to evidence-based practices, but all of the information comes from referenced and resource sites. Kim, this is Jean, and I just wanted to um, follow up with just a quick question. So that may be helpful to people who answered that just question. Is there a a reference or a resource list, I think, with the training toolkit from where the information comes from, because I know we do have include the references in the toolkit, but didn't know if there was a complete list there. There's a complete list, Jean, at the end of each module, because each module uses different references and resources. So each module will have a resource list at the end of it and references so that people can see where the information has come from. That's right, and this is Sarah again, but um, there is an overall resource list that includes the resources from all modules pulled together. We don't have a reference list um, of all the references from all modules on the website right now, but that is something that we could look into. And I think that wraps up our question. So thank you everyone for joining us today and please feel free to reach out to us. We look forward to hearing from you.